to the north. Roman imposters led by Tetricus grow ever stronger. To the east, the usurper Queen Zenobia marches her armies into our lands. This is unacceptable. Give us an emperor from humble beginnings. Give us a leader our armies will follow. Give us Emperor Aurelian. Hello guys and welcome to Vulcan Total War. Today we're going to be starting a Rome 2 Empire Divided campaign. I have decided on which faction I'm going to be playing. So let's get into the Empire Divided screen where we have multiple cultures to choose from. We have the Divided Roman Empire, we have the Germanic Kingdoms, Eastern Empires, Nomadic Tribes and Britannic Celts. I'm going to be going for the Eastern Empires today. We're going to be starting a game as the Sassanids. We're going to be playing on very hard difficulty. So we'll have to see how we get on. Let's uh, read the description of the Eastern Empires. With the decline of the Parthian Empire and the defeat of the last Sassanid king, a new dynasty has risen in their place. The Sassanid Persians have seceded the Parthians as the new eastern superpower and the rival to Rome. Swiftly marshalling their military forces into rapid expansion, they have quickly reconquered many of the eastern provinces that had fallen into lawlessness or independent rule. Having faced defeat inflicted at Roman hands at the city of Hatra in modern-day Iran, and in the strategically important hills of Armenia where Rome's well-ordered legions finally pushed back the burgeoning Persian war machine, the scene is set for many future confrontations. However, now Rome's strength lies in tatters. The Sassanids could capitalize on their mortal enemy's current state of disarray. Ancient Persia's glorious legacy may yet be revived. So as the Sassanids, we have our own description here as well. Ashapur I took the throne as the Sassanid ruler of Persia, he sensed Rome's weakness. In AD 250, he invaded Mesopotamia, reaching as far as the Roman provinces of Syria and Armenia. The greatest victory was against Emperor Valerian, who was captured alive. Just when all looked lost, Roman allies in Palmyria intervened and pushed the Sassanid forces back to Cetisphon, reclaiming the lost eastern provinces for themselves. After Shapur's death to illness, his son Horsmids took over the reins of the empire, vowing to continue the fight against Rome and bring unimaginable greatness to the house of Sassan. So there is a few bonuses we get for choosing this combination. We have centralized authority, which gives us minus banditry in all your provinces. And we also have Silk Road, which gives us plus 20% wealth from all commerce buildings. So commerce buildings will be most likely our primary source of income other than maybe trade. Since I believe banditry reduces your trade value in provinces. But we'll have to look into that when I get into it. Because this has been a long time since I played Rome 2. And uh, I am not familiar with the mechanics, uh, but we are going to be jumping into it on very hard anyway. Our initial challenge is actually easy, so that kind of makes up for it. Um, our other bonuses are local dominance, minor diplomatic bonus with eastern and nomadic factions. And we have Aswaran, which is a plus 20% charge bonus for all cavalry units. So we're going to be focusing on our cavalry as well, and I love cataphracts, so... We're going to be going for quite a few cataphracts by the end of the campaign. It's going to be a long one, I think could be pretty damn difficult at times but we have a good starting position so hopefully all will go well let me uh, 
go ahead and start the campaign. You were the third Sassanid Shine Shah. The stars have ordained that you will eclipse your great predecessors, Ardashir and Shapur. Your satraps protect most of the borders, leaving you free to wage war against the desert kingdoms to the southwest, while maintaining an uneasy truce with Palmyra. The Roman provinces to the northwest are an enticing yet difficult prize. You also need to deal with the Dahi, who threaten both your lands and those of your satraps. As for the satraps themselves, be wary of Sakastan, for the Sakas are descended from a freedom-loving nomadic tribe prone to revolts. Here we are, guys, in the campaign, Rome 2. Been a while. But here we are with the, the objective issue, the conquest of Arabia. The lands of Arabia were home to petty desert kings who boasted of their wealth to put an end to their hubris Shahin Shah Hormids chose to conquer their kingdoms. So our objective is to completely control the following one province either by direct ownership or through satrapies and military allies. So Arabia Magna is the objective and troubled times. In recent years the whole world has been torn by wars and strife. The weakening of the Roman Empire has given rise to banditry everywhere. Trade between settlements has become almost impossible. Standing armies and outposts can help increase the safety of provinces, while certain reforms can make settlements more self-sufficient. With cities being overcrowded, squalor has become a serious issue. If we are to avoid an outbreak of plague, we have to find ways to reduce squalor, such as sanitation buildings and reforms. Okay, so we have a pretty large kingdom by the looks of things. Let's uh, zoom all the way out. We have Mesopotamia here, we have Persia, pretty much, uh, we have Carmania, and we have Parthia. We also have a province in Media Magna, and Arabia Magna down here is the basically the province that it's asking us to control. Now first thing I'm going to do before we start is jump into technology, we'll choose our technology. We can either go for Pagan train, training, which is going to give us extra melee attack skill and melee defense skill for tier 1 units. Or we can go for trade overseers, which gives us plus 50% tariff income from trade agreements with satrapies. That could be quite good. Let's see what it leads on to. So claim the crown gives us level 2 settlements, which is pretty important, honestly. Then city development gives us uh, minus 20% city center building construction costs. And I think honestly, focusing on our income and also our public order is going to be very important throughout this campaign. It always is when you're playing on very hard. But again, having like elite units and making my battles easier is also a good way to go about things. But this is pretty cool. Empire of East and West plus four public order or your faction is an empire. I'm not sure what defines us being an empire. There we go, I'm sure some of you guys will let me know in the chat. Uh, let's have a look at economy. This enables uh, upgraded sanitation buildings and uh, industrial and farming buildings. We also get Latin translators which improves our harbors and gives us extra commerce. We do get uh, bonuses from commerce, so getting the Latin translators might be a good idea. It costs 500 per turn to research. We got uh, taxation of nobles here, 300 wealth from the noble families. That's going to take five turns. Is that per turn, 300 wealth from noble families? Or is that just a one-off? Because that seems a bit pointless if it's just one time. Uh, Royal Benevolence gives enables trading buildings, Royal Bazaars, level 4 buildings, and Control of the Silk Road gives us plus 40 silk, plus 20% wealth from commerce in all regions. This looks like a very good thing to go for early on. Uh, that will definitely boost our economy. As for culture, looking in the bottom left here by the way guys, just for my reference as to what I'm talking about. 
this gives us more sort of commerce building if I look at things, some upgraded uh, religious buildings. Royal harems give, grants us three eunuchs. Not entirely sure the purpose of eunuchs, but there we go. Uh, plus 15% research rate. Got 600 per turn to research. That's quite a lot, actually. But that improves our research rate. And uh, Venerate Chapeau the First, or Venerate Chapeau the First, gives us uh, plus four public order in all provinces, plus eight cultural conversion. This could be very nice as well. Because public order is probably one of the most expensive things early on. So going up towards uh, Venerate Chapeau the First, I think might be my first choice. Second choice will be Control of the Silk Road. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, as for the campaign, this gives us uh, minus mercenary recruitment costs, a plus one to all attributes of champions, plus fifteen percent champion action chance of success. So this is all to do with uh, using agents, I assume, and just general upgrades for our army. Not particularly useful, in my opinion. It doesn't look like the sort of military upgrades are fantastic, honestly. I would say the only one that would matter would be the army buffs here so that we can get uh, upgraded military buildings. So yeah, we'll go for Venerate Chapeau the first, first of all, uh, which will enable trade overseers. Let's have a look at what we're doing with trade. We'll jump into diplomacy. So I'm not sure how I should do this. I guess we'll sort by attitude and see who we can trade with. Uh, media here is one of our satrapies, I believe. So we have Sakistan, we have Armenia, we have Media, Bactria, and uh, Margiana. So let's uh, start trading with all of these, since My we will have the technology which will increase the amount we get from them. Ask for some I, money as well. Servant in matters of diplomacy, await your so that is moderate chance of success. I respectfully ask that you consider let's go 1,500. There we go, okay, that works. This is good. That's nice. We're getting some cash from doing this as well. Uh, let's have a look at the next one then. So, Margiana. Greetings, most excellent friend. Be at home and speak as you would before. Okay, they gave me 2,000. We'll try 2,000 for like pretty much all of them. Uh, Mascat is not a satrapy. Do you want them to be? I mean, it's not worth trading with anyone we want to take over. Armenia, we can trade with for sure. Name, be welcome, and may the blessings of the gods. Okay, they accepted two thousand we as well. We have heard of your great wisdom, and with this generous offer, we have. Uh, Garia. I'm not sure we want to trade with them. We might want to trade with Mascat. We can probably trade with Mascat for now. We're not going to trade with Garia because our time I'm probably going to invade in them. Wisdom and seek accord. So we'll go trade agreement with Mascat. We'll ask for some money as well. That's still high. Maybe we can go 2,500. You Maybe have not. an honest face, even as you offer an honest bribe. I must. There we go. We can ask no more. Your proposal is wise, honourable, and I hope pregnant. Uh, Sakistan. They don't really like us. We might still be able to trade with Before them. Before you say anything, know that I have an amulet against the evil eye. Dark sorcery will gain you. Never mind. Hopefully our relationship with Sakistan will, con will improve over time. So that's good. We've increased our income to 3,715. That will get even better over the next turn because we will get the plus 50% income from those trade agreements, tariff income from trade agreements with satrapies. So all of our trade agreements with those will double in value or well, not quite double, but go plus 50%. We have uh, four public order here, which is pretty good. Cultural differences is minus three, military presence is two. So if we move our military out of here, going to go down to zero. We probably want to build some form of uh, 
public order building. Let's go and build the trading post here because that gives us extra wealth from local commerce, which is good because as our faction, we have the traits that give us more cash from commerce buildings. It is commerce building, this isn't it? Yes, the Silk Road buff from Eastern Empires. Okay, I'm not particularly sure about all of these new places and things to look at. This is just our summary of our faction. We have politics. I'm sure if we need to secure loyalty or whatever during the campaign. We also have character. So this is Hormid's our leader. And these are the records. Okay, so we'll just leave that be for now. I'm sure it'll pop up at some point if we need to do anything there. We have 17,500 to spend. So let's go ahead and secure that trading post. That will give us plus one here in public order, which will be very helpful. May as well expand the city at um, Astarabad as well. And this is already generating quite a lot of cash for us. But uh, that is producing squalor and is losing us food. Maybe we should go for a shrine here, although I'm probably going to have to build the sanitation buildings in the capitals of every province. I'm going to avoid that for now. We could maybe even go for courier post though, since we are going to be using the harbour here. What does banditry do? Banditry threat is zero. Contributing factors are armies at the moment. Bandit threat is zero. Food export penalty is zero. Okay, so that's not actually affecting us at all at the moment. Maybe banditry is not too much of an issue for us yet. I think I'm going to go for the infantry camp actually. So we already have the animal breeder here and this is sort of my capital province I think so being able to recruit infantry here is probably a good idea uh, let me do that I've also got to recruit into this army currently it's made up of immortal infantry and Anatolian slingers we don't have any cavalry so I'm assuming that's what we need to go for horse skirmishes tend to do more damage and that is definitely the case so yeah we'll go for some horse skirmishes and we'll go for a couple of eastern scouts those will be my cavalry. I'm going to create all of those in one turn. Is Hormids our leader? Let's uh, upgrade these guys. That's going to give them level one armor. Okay, cool. Not bad. So that's our first province dealt with. There's just a lot of management to do at the start of this campaign. I tell you that much. Uh, Persepolis is going to get a well. That is our sanitation building. Very important. Uh, Susa here can build a trading post most likely. We already have the shrine here. These religious gatherings look nice but they cost to dismantle which means basically as they get bigger they cause us issues, I'm assuming. Let's right click on that and see what's going on here. So, Mithraic cultural influence. Uh, we also have Manichaean, Manichaean cultural influence and Christian cultural influence. Hmm. So this is something that I guess we're going to have to manage in provinces we choose to. I'm guessing I can just choose to ignore it, but I avoid the bonuses of those. Let's go for a trading post for now. I have a lot of cash, so I can't really go wrong. At uh, Arsakia, you can already build Hamsfer Infantry. 
I think I'm just gonna get a shrine here just to deal with public order and sanitation all that good stuff and make sure that our culture stays in our favor here we're actually minus one on public order we do have an army here as well this is all cavalry at the moment let's maybe move up towards Nisa and I will recruit some infantry into this army Destination reached. we can get uh, Sassassian Levy Spearman Camps for infantry, which is basically just peasants. And Persian skirmishers. So I guess we'll get a couple of each. There we go. And we can upgrade these guys. And that gives us level 1 weapons and level 1 horses. Okay, cool. So we have the infantry camp here, which unlocks the recruitment of Sassassian, Levy Spearmen and Persian Skirmishers. And we also have the Horse Trainers, which unlocks Hans for Infantry. Uh, let's go for the Animal Breeders here, since these guys are Horse Trainers. So getting level 1 Horses is good. Um, it gives us level 1 Horses upon recruitment. So may as well be able to recruit Horsemen in that province. Um, let's upgrade at Susia as well. We have the infantry camp here, we have the silk trader. I think we're going to go for a trading post just to help out with the public order. Like a shrine would be much better, but the trading post leads on to better things. And we also benefit from commerce like that. Okay. Uh, down here at uh, Carmania, we will expand. Armosia with a well. This is a marble pit which increases wealth from industry. I'm going to upgrade this one again with the rest of the population here. And we'll go for a city centre, I feel. It's probably a decent shout. This prison crew camp gives us extra melee skill for all ships upon recruitment, melee defence, and morale. We're not recruiting ships from here just yet. Let's go for the city center. Get that public order sorted out. It's very important. And I'm pretty sure that is all of the provinces dealt with. I, I can open up this right one and just check them all. Yeah, pretty sure we've already sorted them out. And now we just need to sort out recruitment. Uh, we've recruited into two armies already. We've got uh, this army, which is going to hopefully deal with the Dahe up here. And then we have this army, which is going to deal with uh, the Lachmids. At your command. And then we have another army, Rostam's Companions, which I'm assuming is ready and waiting to attack Sakistan. Sakistan, I don't think, has an army, but they will have a garrison in these places here. Ah, they do have an army here, the followers of Shapur. We fight for you, my lord. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll upgrade them for now. It might not be worth recruiting into this army, though. I might just keep them on the defensive in Harmosia. Use them to get the public order up. And then if, for whatever reason, Sakistan rebels, then uh, I can build the army off Rostam's companions here. We also have Cartier. He is our Magus or Magus. I think it's Magus. Anyway, uh, he can do administration, which increases tax rates while helping protect local settlements against authoritarian agent actions. I don't think our tax is very high here, though, or anywhere really. Uh, let's have a look. This is the highest. Actually, no, Parthia is our highest tax rate place. Uh, I wonder what he can do in enemy places. Not sure. Uh, but I think, I guess what we can do, if we move over to uh, Parthia. Might be able to take advantage of him over there. Let's head over in that direction. 
and we might finally be able to click the end turn button. We have a war target available for our satrapies, I'm assuming. And actually, we could maybe focus on Gyaha here. If we just get some Hansford infantry, we can just bolster that army and then sail them across to uh, Gyaha. So once we're finished with uh, Adumatu with uh, the Forgotten Warriors here and uh, Hormids, uh, yeah, we should be good. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's uh, end the turn, I think. And that's everything done. Awesome. Oh, we have to issue edicts still. Okay. We haven't done that. So, provincial edicts. We haven't had a look at these. <laughs> so much to do. Um, tax harvesting is plus 15% tax. Uh, plus 10 loyalty to political party ruling this province. Uh, plus 4 public order and plus 4 food. Uh, we don't really want that. Commercial stimulation. Plus 20 wealth from all commercial buildings. Reduces slave population decline. And uh, conscription. Minus 20% recruitment cost. Tax harvesting is probably the best for Parthia for now. Let's have a look again into the political stuff because it was saying about securing loyalty for the party that owned the province. Yeah, plus 10 loyalty to political party ruling this province. What does that even mean? I mean, we have the House of Asper Bad Palev and House of Karin Palev. We currently have 41% of influence as the House of Sasan. And currently we are protected against a secession and civil war. And we are currently an empire. Okay. We can actually change, I think, to a kingdom. It's crazy. Okay, so we can change. Not that we'll probably want to, but... There's a lot of interesting new stuff in the Empire Divided DLC. I think some of this has been, like, added to the game previously, but... I haven't really explored it properly since it has been. So anyway, let's move on to the next turn, finally. Okay, I've forgotten to do it in the other provinces. Uh, Persis. We'll do the... Extra from commerce buildings, plus 20% from all commerce buildings, reduces slave population decline. We don't actually have that much from commerce at the moment, though. So it'd probably be better just to go tax. Same with uh, Carmania, even though the tax is going to be a small amount. That'll do. Let's carry on. That was a very nice quick end turn. I've been playing too much Warhammer recently. And I got used to uh, it being slower, but there we go. We've uh, unlocked Preserve the Zender Vesta, or actually, no, that's what we're researching next. So that will unlock Wrestling Arenas, Traveling Wrestlers, Library, uh, also the upgraded Religious Buildings, and the Royal Crown. Every new ruler is adorned with a personal Royal Crown, a symbol of His Majesty. As the new Shahanshah, what do you wish your crown symbol to be? The symbol of the Sassassian dynasty? Or Sassan... Sassanian dynasty? Um, the symbol of our people, our faith, our purpose in life. The symbol of victory, the symbol of life and growth, heat and light, food and shelter. I think the symbol of our people would be good if that gives us like a public order bonus. That would be probably pretty good. 
Uh, also, the symbol of life and growth is probably pretty good as well. Symbol of victory is mostly military based, but we should be fine in battles, I believe. Um, symbol of Sassian dynasty, I'm, I'm assuming, helps us with the political stuff. Then we're going to go for Vaha, uh, Farah Vaha. I'm guessing we'll find out what that does next turn. But all of the edicts have been issued. Quartermaster's report is complete. Cool. Have these guys uh, recruited more troops? I feel like it might even be worth bringing my dude down here and attacking Gerha early. Got mercs here. I don't think there's any decent mercenaries that we really want. I might just uh, recruit myself even more skirmishers and scouts. Our Lord needs good fighters. And then next turn we can travel towards Adi Matthew. Let's get Rostam's champions to jump on the water here. Or maybe even just travel up on land. If we go to Force March, yeah, we can just travel all the way up here and maybe join our leader at some point. Fury of Berethanger is uh, in the best position at the moment. So we'll just continue to get more troops. And we've sorted out the public order. It'll probably get even better next turn as well. Public order is going back up in every province. And we've secured ourselves a lot of cash. I don't think there's anywhere we can build, though. We can upgrade a few things, but these don't cost any money to upgrade. The main issue is they improve Manichaean cultural influence, which I'm assuming is a bad thing. Because we want Eastern culture. Oh well, uh, Cartier is on his way, My and uh, we will end the turn. I shall take a moment to compose. Uh, basically, recruiting big old armies, and hopefully, we'll be able to defeat our enemies. So preserve the Zenda Vesta is complete, and now we have the research of three eunuchs on their way. Got a trait gained. Good thoughts and good deeds. The central symbol of the Zoroastrianism provides a strong sense of unity, and the people are celebrating. So if we go to our faction now, go to our leader, we get plus one public order per turn in all provinces and plus six percent civil research rate. Very nice. That's exactly what I was hoping for, the extra public order. Uh, let's carry on. So should we march this? I, I assume we probably should. Just so that we can maybe attack that next turn. Uh, we'll have this chap just uh, jolly into this province. And he can recruit some units then. Because currently he's got a lot of Hamsfer, which aren't the best. We need some cavalry for him. So we'll go for the same old combo we have been. Uh, do, you, do we think the Fury of... Varethragna is uh, ready to attack Akka. Hmm, that is a good question. We fight for you, my lord. I think maybe we go Come for Eastern Scouts, some Eastern Horse Skirmishers. We'll need more infantry and we'll need more skirmishers, I think. We'll go for one more set of recruitment and then maybe we can make the attack happen. We also have the ability to upgrade our shrines, Tower of Silence, Royal Sanctuary, and Fire Altar. 
They all reduce our food, but give us different bonuses. So Tower of Silence gives us uh, extra sanitation public order and improves the bread and games edict. Uh, the Royal Sanctuary here, I think they all improve the bread and games edict, but just in different ways. So the bread and games edict here improves wealth generated from commerce buildings and this one improves wealth generated from cultural buildings. But it doesn't really matter at uh, Arsakia just yet, so it might just be worth going for the Tower of Silence there. Although the Royal Sanctuary gives us wealth from culture. Depends what the public order looks like, because I don't think we need like a lot of public order, do we? I think Arsakia it already has a lot of extra happiness due to buildings already, so yeah, we could probably go for the Royal Sanctuary. Yeah, let's do that. At, uh, let's just go through all of the provinces in order. So Parthia here, we can upgrade to a resting arena or a library. Library gives us uh, extra research rate and wealth from learning. Uh, spice market, governor's planets and slave trader is all commerce so I think we'll wait for that honestly. Especially the, uh, the spice market, 200 wealth from local commerce and plus 3% wealth from all sources. Very nice indeed. Governor's Palace gives us a plus three public order per turn, 100 wealth from subsistence, and uh, minus two to banditry. The Slave Trader gives us wealth from agriculture, uh, wealth from slaves, reduces slave population decline, improved wealth from industry and agriculture in the province, I'm assuming that is. It gives us minus four public order per turn. I think it'd be worth waiting for the spice market, although the library looks good as well due to the extra research rate. That might be good if I stack it early on. That extra plus five public order per turn is also nice. I'm tempted to go to the, for the library for now. We can always downgrade them in future. So at Mesopotamia, uh, we will go for the traveling wrestlers, I guess. Although the trader here, which gives us the extra 200 wealth from local commerce, is very nice. So we'll definitely wait for that one. At uh, Hatra, I'm going to get the one that uh, gives us the most culture. Yeah, the Eastern Cultural Influence here, plus four from the Royal Sanctuary, because we need to try and combat uh, the Manichaean community here. Uh, Perseus. We can go for the library. Going to wait at Susa. We don't have enough cash to build a royal sanctuary. Although that would most likely be the best choice. Yeah, the royal sanctuary is probably the best choice there. Here we can afford a library just about, so we'll get them all on the way. Stack that research rate, and it should be good. Well, that is awesome. We are all done, pretty much. And uh, unfortunately, guys, that has been my time. So definitely very much a managerial initial episode. We've gone through all our provinces. We've got ourselves set up. And it looks like we're going to be having a battle possibly with the Forgotten Warriors here at Adumatu in the next episode. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.